you know about this? Wemo 100.1. What's up? It's Wemo 100. Pittsburgh's number one for hip hop on a funny Friday. I asked around the office one word that you could think of when you when you mention the name Corey Hokel. Some of the things I can't say on the radio, <laughs> but I will say the top. The top was disrespectful. Oh yeah. Is that a goal for you, Corey Holcomb? Is that something that that you, you know what? I just need to be. I need folks to think I'm disrespectful. You're hella funny. No, no, no. Hella well, funny. People, and honest. Uh, mistake what I say for being disrespectful. But it's but, so honest. Um, the, the truth is shocking, and sometimes <laughs> it scares people. So that's how they react. They say, "Oh, you disrespectful." No, I just said the truth. No, you are hilarious. Yeah, yeah. You I, are. I'm glad you. I'm glad you found that. <laughs> I, I, it so, is. I, most people find me funny. Mm -hmm. We get a kick when some people get mad and walk out on my show or whatever. Is that like a <laughs> yes? I got them. Yeah. yeah. I know when watching you and Wildin' Out, I'm like, with Corey take the mic, it's a wrap. Yeah, oh, it's, yeah. it's done. It's done. So if um if if they were if they were able to show all of the stuff that I say at Wildin' Out that never has a chance to make it to the end. <laughs> It's like the audience already <laughs> anticipates it when I walk up to the mic. Yeah. But they, you know, MTV tries to make it where we'll show you this, but we won't show you that. Because, mm -hmm. you know, Nick Cannon, he sold that show. He's so smart. He sold He's the show. Smart. I'm and sorry. now MTV Jeez. owns the show, and that's why they got a lot of different things going on with the show, like mm. guys kissing and stuff like that. Oh. It's I stopped watching it. Yeah, I yeah. stopped watching it. Yeah, so. MTV took it over, so you know what I'm saying? It's you like, ever think about doing something like that? Not in that same lane, but what I think like your Wild show. Out? Yeah, I think you would have an amazing variety show or something. Oh my God! And it could be called disrespectful with Corey Holcomb. Well, we can call it that. We can call, whatever will whatever will give people attention. When people have your attention, they um they decide for themselves. And a lot of times, like. Uh, TV stations and things like mm -hmm. that. They don't want certain people to get the attention of the audience because they'll choose this right. over that. Yeah. And I believe they will choose what we do over what they want us to do. Who is the biggest complainer? Because you talk about, I mean, you, there's nobody that is exempt, I don't think, unless I miss something. But you got baby mom's jokes. I mean, I remember, I remember you talking about selling T-shirts outside the abortion clinic. Yeah. Uh, like ex-girlfriends, <laughs> ugly girls, like there's nobody off limits. So does everybody come up to you? Those are baby moms and people who like, I can't believe you today. I can't believe you said that. People who lack confidence always want to blame everybody else yeah. for what's going wrong. But, you know, really life is funny. Yeah. When they walk up to me, it's funny because, you know, it's like, yo, I don't even know you. <laughs> I, one day I was with my, uh, my daughter. Mm -hmm. Back when she was like maybe about eight or nine, this lady walked up to me and she said, is this your daughter? I was like, yes. Yeah. She said, all that stuff's going to happen to her. <laughs> Both looked at the lady and laughed like, oh, this lady is insane. Yeah, listen, you are a professional. <laughs> and and uh, just just someone of your caliber. You've been in this game how long? How long have you been doing comedy? Man, I started in the early 90s. I think it was like... I think I started doing comedy in 92, 93. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Comedy has changed a lot, but you stay consistent. What do you see with other comedians out there? Now you got the YouTube comedians, the Instagram comedians, so. I mean, you know, it's like with the YouTube, Instagram comedians, some of them, well, most of them aren't ready. And they're put out there at comedy clubs because they'll sell tickets right now. Right. Right. So they actually shoot themselves in the foot. Mm -hmm. A couple of them are funny, like Country Wayne. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, Country mm -hmm. Wayne is good. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, yeah, they, they got it like that. But w with comedy, it's like what's happening with comedy and almost everything you say, you can get in trouble by saying whatever. Whatever can get you in trouble just because you said it. And I've never switched up who I am and I never will because I know that... The only person who can judge me is somebody who knows me. Ask right. the people who know me who I am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I say that because a, a stage mate of yours, um, I'm not sure of the relationship, but Dave Chappelle just came out with Sticks and Stones. We can just talk about some entertainment real quick. Everything that he said in his stand-up, I don't know if you've seen it, but That's was something. right on. I was like, ooh. But it was funny and it was right. It was true. So I think people are way too sensitive. We're so far removed from hearing people speak honestly and truthfully. Mm -hmm. When you see it, it's almost like you don't even know what to do. Right. It's like, because Dave Chappelle, he was speaking honestly and truthfully about, mm -hmm. when I worked Black Jesus, I said that. I was like, 
we can say the N word all day long. Mm -hmm. But if I say certain words, y'all. No, cut, cut. Right. I'm like, what are you talking about, cut? Right, <laughs> right, exactly. I gotta love y'all, man. Well, I'm glad that this but didn't make you want to stop doing comedy because sometimes yeah, it, it can be passion. frustrating. Yeah, this nah, is. Nah, dealing with average folk is something we all have to do. Mm -hmm. And when I say average folk, I mean those who just want to go by the rules, go off everything they're told, never research nothing. Just mm -hmm. those are the average folk. So. They don't, they don't frustrate me. I laugh at them. Well, I'm glad. So many things that have happened in entertainment just this week. I want to know what your opinion is real quick. <laughs> R. Kelly yeah, wanted to get out of solitary confinement and be a gym pop. I think it's a bad idea because I don't know him, know him, but I know him. If he's in general population, it may not go well. It may not go well. Mm -hmm. I mean, because you know what I'm saying? It's like... Some, even though some people are big stars, everything, they're very insecure people. Mm -hmm. And the things they do show insecurity. So mm -hmm. if he's in general population, are you going to be out there with the 12 plays if you want to play? <laughs> <laughs> Nicki Minaj is retiring. She wants to start a family. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing? Come on, man. Nicki, Nicki belongs to the game. Mm -hmm. We ain't finna give up this game. Yeah. Everybody, all us who in the game. I guess she figured it worked for Cardi. Maybe it'll work for her. It ain't working for Cardi. Cardi is out of here. Mm -hmm. These people are out here. You're not finna slow down. Mm -hmm. Do you know how much discipline it takes to, to really be what you um, are, 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 are trying to be, like these so-called Christian folk? It takes a lot of discipline to do this. Mm -hmm. And I just can't see somebody like Nicki Minaj and her fake body parts <laughs> getting it all together. What's some things you don't write jokes about? What's I don't do politics. Politics, it's a waste there of time. There are some comedians that do, and yeah. I think it's touchy and people get upset about it. Is that why? Yeah, you, I can lose the room with politics mm -hmm. because there are people who are so set in stone about this, that with politics, and it's like, yo, politics... You know, these people can sell you a dream every four years. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And if you if you speak on what happens, people actually get mad. Mm -hmm. That's something I can't control. That's why I stick with the relationship mm -hmm. thing because everybody can relate to it. Yeah, doesn't matter if you get mad. This is what it is. Yeah. And when people hear the truth about relationships, even when they don't like it, sometimes they still want to hear what you got to say mm -hmm. because. Somebody that they love and maybe trying to work things out with. You guys argue about this stuff all the time. Yep. That's why it's it's a good idea for couples to come to my show this weekend and find out that it's not the end of the world just because it is what it is. And if your relationship is not working for you, Corey might be able to de determine that with these key factors. If if you know, I don't know what it is if you can tell that your relationship is not working, but I'm sure you're gonna talk about it. <laughs> or instead you're gonna let people know she's not the one for you. Or, or he's, he's not, not the, the one, one for you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm older, so yeah. I'm not afraid of the truth. Mm -hmm. If somebody doesn't want to be around me after I tell them the truth, I understand. And they deserve to know the truth. Mm -hmm. And I explain that to the guys at the show. You know, a lot of us, we don't tell the truth because we make excuses why. But the truth is what that person deserves to know. Mm -hmm. Everybody who I tell who I am, they don't always stick around, even though a lot of them do because I have trinkets little things to make them happy. They act like they're going to leave, but they never really leave. Yeah. <laughs> Just complain the whole time. Are you a cool dad? Um, I, I can't say I'm a, a cool dad. You walked in and I was like, yo, he's got some swag. He's my, like, my kids are in Chicago yeah. and I'm all over the world doing right. comedy, so right. I've missed a lot. Okay. So, but when I do kick it with them, I think I give them the game and show them enough love, but they understand, dance, they right? Like, I don't. Do you be doing the dances? I don't do that because that's not me. Okay. I ain't mad at the people. Um, all the knowledge you get out here, um, as you as you're in the in, in the world, mm -hmm. you need to make sure you explain to your kids in a way where they can understand you uh, the things that they really need to watch out for. Right. Because when they encounter them, and they will, that's when they will remember. Oh, I remember my mom. I remember my dad told me about this. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you're helping them even though it seems like they're not listening. Right. When you communicate with them and talk to them for real, when that nonsense comes, they'll be like, oh, That's what even though I'm about. in this spot, I know how to handle it. Right. Not to get deep, and I'm, I'm going to let you go after this. 
um, because this is personal. Have you talked to Kevin? Is he doing all right? I haven't you know talked to Kevin, but to Kevin, did, I let Faith handle some things. Kevin, when I saw that car, yeah, that was shocking. Yeah. Definitely. I got some old school cars and I got the motor hooked up. Yeah. So I know how powerful these cars can be. Right. And for him to go off the road like that and still be all right, I'm very happy that he's all right. But mm -hmm. I don't worry about Kevin because one thing about Kevin Hart, he's a true giver. He's selfless. And I believe people like that, they got a, they got a light around them where, you know what I'm saying, God take care of them. Yeah. Kevin's a selfless dude. I love you, Kevin Hart. I know... I know that the people around you won't have you around me like we used to be when we was like this. But you know what's up. I'm glad you're all right. And do your thing. Do mm -hmm. your thing. I know how it is, man. Do your thing out there, boy. Corey Hope, I'm taking the stage this weekend in Pittsburgh. It's always a pleasure. I don't want to say it's always a pleasure because this is the first time we've ever met. I think. <laughs> so it's been a pleasure. And it's hopefully the next pleasure. time I'll say it's always a pleasure. But that's what's up. Yes. That's that, was a, that was a real moment right there. Yes. That's I'll that's be like, wait up. a minute. I've never met him before. So I'm not going to lie and say that. But it was definitely a pleasure. Now, you know, I, I always like to sit down and just have real conversation with yeah. someone, especially someone that I admire. And I've admired your career for years. Wow, I don't get mad about the things you say. Because oh, even yeah. if it hits close to home, I'm like, well, shh, I need to take some inventory and get it together. That's I need to I figure say. out if this brother's right for me because Corey's saying. <laughs> That's what's up. Are you going to write a book or any? I think you should do greeting cards. That I think you so should do dope. greeting. Can you so please dope. do greeting, especially so for Christmas? Dope. Christmas, like, you know, we have mahogany. But like the Corey Christmas or Corey, Corey cards, like I want to make break some, up relationship make some card. Cards, yeah. Do it. I'm gonna do it. That's and you dope. Remember, we said it on video. That's right. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> be like I'm the church. I want ten percent tie. Hey, go ahead. On pro <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna see you some cards. Oh no! Oh my God, <laughs> Corey Holcomb, it is a pleasure. Hey, that's Thank what's you so, so much for everything. It's a pleasure. I love this conversation. With yeah, you. we can do that anytime. We can do that's it anytime. Whatever. Up. Whenever see him this weekend in Pittsburgh, follow him on social media. So, are you on social media? Because I saw you have ten thousand followers. You follow follow four people and posted three things on Instagram. But I don't know if that. I you. just got back in that Instagram. I, I was and like, then this I got a brother. fan Instagram. My my, mm -hmm. my people run. Mm -hmm. I got to get into the Instagram game. I had a Twitter. They took it. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Yeah. I'm not surprised. That's why I can't post stuff on Instagram <laughs> because when I say what I want to say, society has their way How of... How do they do that and they won't take somebody else's Twitter account? Well, the what happens, people, people say stuff to me. They go into the Twitter and they make sure they DM messages or say messages where I see them. And I was foolish enough to say things back. And because I'm clever and people laugh at them when I say things back, they call in and act like I did something to them. But you have someone in higher power that does it all the time, and he still has his Twitter account. Of course. Now we're not. We're going to talk. About I know them people, but. them people like that who can get the Twitter back. But I don't have time to put all this effort into a social media page that could be taken like that. That's yeah. why I'm like, okay, social media, be cool. See I see him on the stage. Fifty one fifty thing. That's what I do. <laughs> fifty one fifty uh, nation. I'm in. The, I'm in. I'm in Pittsburgh at the Improv this weekend. Y'all come on out. What's fifty one fifty? That's I my radio it? show. Got it. Just okay. Google Corey Hogan 5150 show and let the adventure begin. I want to do that. You're going to like it because we be talking crazy. Oh, I want, I'm doing it right now. <laughs> we be talking crazy. Corey Hogan this weekend in Pittsburgh. Follow him on social media. I don't know where. Maybe MySpace. I don't know if he's still in Facebook. I don't know. <laughs> Find him. Check him out online. <laughs> and also this weekend in the city at the Improv. It's Whammo 100. What you know about this? Whammo 100.1.